Thank you very much. It was extremely important. Uh, it's a pity that nobody from the ministry is with us because, as far as I know, this uh, matching fund that, that was mentioned, they are going to, to not only to suspend but, but to get rid of this matching fund. So, so we, we, we believe it should be reconsidered again because it's really important especially for ERC grants and, and, and maybe not that much in, in other programs in Horizon 2020 like in, in ERC grants. And we'll see what happens uh, with the new framework, right? Yeah, no, nobody knows, nobody knows. We have uh, time for, for uh, questions, discussions. Uh, you can ask questions to all the panelists, but also if, if you have a question still to Professor Bourguignon, I, I hope he, he can still answer. So please, we, we have like 20 minutes for, 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 for questions and answers, please. Agata Karska from Nicolaus Copernicus University in Torun. Uh, so I have a question. I'm not fully sure to whom. Uh, maybe to, to Professor Romanovich. Uh, so when shaping the application, which is really interdisciplinary, uh, is it common or at least acceptable uh, to put the name of the key collaborator that will be uh, taking part in this proposal? This is one question. I, I'm from molecular astrophysics, so I'm talking about, I'm an astronomer, I'm talking about quantum chemists involved. Uh, because I think that, you know, we have some shared ideas. Uh, obviously, I'm the leader. Uh, but without his, you know, whole background, maybe this wouldn't be uh, really trustful, right, that we can do this. Uh, and uh, the other idea I have is to involve uh, some company, uh, which uh, mostly gives tools. So, you know, programming efficiency and you know, artificial intelligence that cannot really be as successful in universities as in companies. So would that also be possible to then uh, mention them directly and their role, not really research-based, but, but in this methodology part? So absolutely, you should absolutely mention uh, any collaborator that is uh, necessary to your project, uh, that will make your project uh, believable, you know, and as, what is really important though is to make sure that these collaborators know that they are collaborators in your proposal, because we actually quite often have situations where uh, somebody finds out that they are a collaborator uh, in particular, a panel member finds out that uh, they have been named as a collaborator on a proposal and have never known about it. In which case, the proposal is out, you know, because. Uh, yeah. So, um, so yes, but you have, if you if you if your project uh, requires some expertise uh, that you don't have yourself, then of course you should uh, mention the collaborations. Yes. Uh, maybe if I can add a little bit to this, uh, from my own experience again, because I had a project which was mostly hosted in Prague, but I also had 20% of the budget in Nottingham, uh, <clears throat> which I think is still possible that you can have, in fact, more uh, host institutions in principle in Europe. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and another way how to make it clear that the collaborator will be committed to the project is also to budget some salary for him. Okay, so all that is possible. So, yeah. And in terms of the company, by the way, first of all, <clears throat> host institutions are not limited to academic institutions. People from company can even apply. So again, it just depends on the justification uh, of this, but I don't think that there is any problem if it's well justified to include people from companies. And <clears throat> of course, there are different ways how to, uh, how to um, uh, construct your budget, uh, because <clears throat> you can also order sp specific services, right? Uh, from companies. I mean, we all do when, when, we, uh, when we construct our budget. So it's, it's all possible. It, it just depends on, on what fits best uh, your project. Wojciech Helving, Center for Political Physics of Polish Academy of Sciences. I have a question to Professor Bunyan, but also a quick comment to uh, Dr. Achinger. Uh, maybe the first the comment. I think you should realize once you were in an ERC ground, but also any big ground, you, this is something is that we don't teach in, in everyday uh, life of scientists. You have a leverage to negotiate with the institution 
about how this grant should be conducted, especially if you get such a, you know, a prestigious grant ERC. I'm pretty sure there's, there are overheads that the institution gets which, with, with whom you can get some negotiations saying, look, I cannot attract uh, uh, good people, I tender this, uh, this job internationally, yet we have this constraint. So this is a power you definitely get because I tried it myself and it works in Poland. This is something that is not necessarily uh, in the German system, for example. In the Polish system, you, you, you do have some leverage. Uh, it's hard, but it, it's doable. So I think we should think about about this as a, once you attract the grant, then you should worry later about how to implement it. Uh, my question is the following. It's actually connecting a little bit with what Agata said, and I had this question in the, in the morning. So the ERC uh, grants are a great idea that's been around for 20 years, or more or less, that it was been established 20 years as scientists, by scientists, for scientists. Uh, but it's really, uh, the idea is a little bit egocentric. It's a one genius, one project, one idea, and the, this person builds it. And of course, it makes perfect sense uh, probably in the early stages career when you want to give a young talents a power to separate themselves from their supervisors and peers. But my, day, my question is the following. Are there any thoughts to reevaluate the structure of, of, of grant, ERC grants in the, following, in the following context? Because 21st century science, especially in physical sciences, is really inter, uh, it's a teamwork. It's an interdisciplinary plus international effort and teamwork effort. Uh, yet we cannot name two PIs, for example, in a grant. But sometimes I have a great idea, but I'm pretty sure this idea maybe is not feasible. So I need to discuss with someone a partner will appear and maybe we together get this idea better so why I should compete with him and just apply for myself as a PI with the project if the idea is shared now common so this is the, something I think we're definitely missing in the in this very uh, I would say egocentric but doesn't really mean in, an, in the bad way but very personally based one star one genius one mind uh, uh, picture thank you Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I think uh, you seem to have missed that there are synergy grants now. So synergy grants are exactly designed for that. And one reason why we waited so long is that you see the first time they were launched, it was in 2012. The number of applicants was more than 700 and there were 11 grants. So it was catastrophic success rate. And, and therefore we waited until we had enough money to put on the table so that we could have a, a decent success rate. The first year was 10%, this year is 13%. So I think this is really designed for that. Now concerning the, the other approach, I, I, I see uh, your formula is not the formula I used. I used, uh, I said, uh, for scientists, by scientists, which means that you design the, your project in the, in the way you want. And uh, the extreme case I know is somebody who was uh, actually a demographer who proposed a historical project where the number of uh, participants in the project was 150. And uh, of course, the amount of money which went to every single person was small, but uh, she felt, I mean, she, it was a project about uh, um, marriages between uh, Jews, Muslim, and Christian in Spain over two centuries, and uh, that person felt that the right people to really help her were really the people in the mosques, in the uh, churches, in the synagogues, rather than having somebody going knocking at the door and so on, because she felt that she would gather really in-depth information locally. And then the only way she could do it was associating many people. So the strategy in terms of uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, group you form is totally in your hand. So if you feel that the right way is having 10 people, it's 10 people. If it's 10 senior people, it's 10 senior people, you decide. Uh, we are, there is no limitation to this. The only thing we request, if you are forgetting about synergy for a minute, is that somebody has to take responsibility for the project, which is a different issue. But you still can uh, associate uh, the people you want. I would like also to share my experience because I was uh, a participator of the FP7 grant which connected seven institutes from all over the Europe and we just uh, wrote agreement and it worked. And the grant, a full team was like 30 people from seven institutes. So it is doable. And now question, practical question how to make the evaluation in Poland better. Uh, so for instance, the question to Mr. Achinger, who made your financial plan in your application? You did it yourself or you had some help from somebody to do it? 
because this is something what I'm really scared about. It's a lot of work. And for instance, in Amsterdam, in UK, the scientists have a special person dedicated to it, and they even don't see form A, because somebody else, some, some dedicated person is doing this. We don't have it in Poland. So I'm asking you, who did it? Yeah, so who the, made it? The short answer is I did it myself. Yeah. So, and this is a lot of work. And for instance, the person who is saying to us, you can apply for Uvertura and spend eight months or six months how to fill up ERC proposal, my answer is I don't have so much time to have to learn what I really not an expert yeah, in. Of course, you should focus on the science. And not yes, and uh, so I think my, uh, in Poland the problem is also that we don't have such kind of help as people in Netherlands and UK have. Yes, so uh, the, that was the short answer I did it myself. The maybe yeah. more extended answer is that I uh, uh, I got some uh, some help from from these guys so <laughs> from the uh, from from the office of what's the English name scientific research excellence yes um, and and uh, at some point I was getting so for I mean but this was difficult because for example I was I, I was getting conflicting information from one source and from some other source regarding, for example, whether a, a, a laptop is equipment or some other rubric in, 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 uh, in the table. And uh, it, was, uh, it was stressful and uh, yeah, uh, I wish I didn't, I had never, never had to look at these numbers. And the problem, the other problem is that you have to put some salaries. And, and the salaries have to obey these Horizon 2020 rules. And it's extremely, and I think ac the accounting uh, at my institute tried to help, and I think they still haven't figured out like exactly like how, what's the best way to, to pay as, as, uh, as much as, as, as we can, because the problem is we cannot really spend the money. Um, that, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's difficult to spend the money uh, with with these rules in place, yes. Thank you very much. It's obvious that mathematicians cannot count, yes. <laughs> but but uh, we didn't pay Dr. Achinger for for saying these good words about uh, our office. But it is devoted to help you with with also with the budget. But it is of course related to ERC grants only. So, so in case of other Horizon 2020 projects, you need to look for help in the other institutions like national contact points. Or, but but uh, yes, I realize that we don't have this supported panel of the universities, and that's a very difficult task. Last, last sentence, because two years ago I was invited also to participate in Young Researchers Training Grant in Netherlands. And it was eight people and one person really dedicated to our project to tell us to make our budget. So we didn't touch budget at all, researchers. In Amsterdam it was. Yeah. So short comment, in case of ERC grants, you will get this help uh, at the academy because this is uh, why the office was created. And it was created for, among others, this, uh, this reason. Any other questions or comments? Yes, please. Mm, I, I have a question for Professor Jungwirth, just to, uh, to ask for clarification, that you said that in the Czech Republic you have schemes which are uh, similar to ERC, or ERC-like funding schemes. So are they all tailored like in terms of the requirements uh, similar to ERC, their assessment is like ERC, or uh -huh. there is just one standout uh, scheme like ERC? Well, they are not exactly the same as ERC because the competition is not exactly the same okay. as ERC within Czech Republic, but <clears throat> but the spirit uh, is very similar from many aspects. For example, uh, we first introduced international panels before our si National Science Foundation was all national panels. <clears throat> so I think this is extremely important because it's towards uh, 
uh, uh, um, it's, uh, it's trying to go against conflicts of interest and also improve your competence of, of the panel. So this is very, I think, very important that we have international panels. Also the way how the calls are structured, the, the work program, where they say we're going just for excellence. Okay, so there are no other criteria than just excellence, excellence of the applicant and of the, uh, of the proposal itself. So from that perspective, are very similar. Also from the perspective of splitting it between senior and junior researchers, because that's also very important that the junior researchers are not competing with the senior uh, PIs. <clears throat> we don't have three levels, we have only two. We have junior and senior. Uh, but what we have for the lower, lowest level, or the, the, the really the young scientists, is this postdoctoral travel fellowship. <clears throat> because we've, we think that this is more important for us, is to kick people out, young people out, but with the money. <clears throat> and then, but simultaneously also made it clear that uh, hopefully the research environment would be welcoming them uh, after they spend their PhD years abroad. So, so in that respect, uh, it's, 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 it's inspired by ERC, but of course it cannot copy ERC completely because this, these are two different things. Mm. Just a continuation of the question. So for instance, uh, within the young researchers, is the success rate maintained over how many years? Like uh, in the presentation, it was shown that it doesn't really matter if you are three years after PhD or seven. The success rate of applications is more or less similar. Uh, does the Czech uh, society try to, National Science Foundation try to follow this? Or like, because I was arguing about this with the NCN and they were not willing to do that. <laughs> that uh, to ensure that the success rate for uh, they w for somebody who is two years after PhD will be compared just two years, not the one with seven years after PhD. Uh, well, I don't have these exact numbers, to be honest, off the top of my head. W but in fact, we have, we have the opposite problem. We felt that the success rate was too high. <laughs> so uh, so uh, basically that, that not enough people were applying and that the competition was not the competition we were hoping for, but we, we just hope that it will, you know, it will improve over the years. So we had a, I think, well over 30% success rate in this call, so many people could get it. Uh, <clears throat> but we'll, we'll see. I mean, we're tweaking the programs, and uh, but certainly this is very important. Uh, we also have a window, similar window for uh, for eligible applicants, and uh, we have to make sure that the panels understand that uh, there is a difference between two years and seven years after PhD. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so I also have a question to Professor Jung, if I, I just recalled. Um, so you mentioned these uh, grants that you, in, in Czech Republic you award to the people who got A's and B's. Is that also open to foreign PIs who would be coerced to come to Prague for the money? Uh, it's independent of the nationality, but how it's said now is that it's for applicants from Czech institutions. But do you think that would be a good idea for it to be open to everyone who wants to move to the Czech Republic? We were toying with the idea. <laughs> Yes, please. Uh, okay, uh, that's a very good th thing that uh, uh, Dr. Achinger mentioned the, uh, the grants for A's and B's. So I, I would just like to share my experience. In 2015, I applied for an ERC starting grant. Uh, I made it to the uh, second round. I was invited for the interview, but, but I got a B eventually. <laughs> Before that time, there was a program for the A's and B's of the Polish government, but I think it was at that time suspended. And I would like to strongly stress, and unfortunately there's nobody from the ministry here, I think it would be a very good idea to, to bring it back, because it really alleviates many risks, uh, and in the end it would certainly increase the number of applicants considerably. So I can, uh, uh, when, when, there was a lot of fight in Czech Republic, by the way, to keep that program alive, but now I think it's stable. Uh, uh, but what, what, what they did lately in the Ministry of Education to really justify this program, they really scrutinized very carefully what's going on in Europe. So if you're interested, unfortunately it's in Czech language, but maybe we can Google translate it. Uh, there is a, uh, or you would understand anyway. Uh, uh, there is a, I think it's a really 
a very detailed report of how different countries are introducing and dealing with this unfunded A's and B's programs. And I think this also helped our ministry, uh, people, people at the ministry to justify this program, that this is not a singularity in Czech Republic. And in fact, there are similar programs uh, in other countries. And everywhere, the message is the same. It's a win-win. The work has been already done by the ERC. Why not take advantage of it? Any other comment? Okay, so we are almost uh, perfect on time, so, so if there are no more comments, we can finish. I, I, I can only add one sentence, that at the Academy we, we gathered uh, some or a big part of our laureates of ERC grantees, and we, uh, we prepared a list of uh, suggestions to the Ministry. Among them, these are uh, our suggestions to keep the programs like, like, like the one supporting program that we mentioned at the beginning, also the one to, to support this people who got a uh, evaluation A at ERC project. So, so this is what has been sent or will be sent very soon to the ministry. And I think similar initiatives are also at other institutions and we, we will try to, 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 to gain what we can for our ERC eventual future grantees so thank you very much for for participating in this session and thank you all the uh, speakers at the session